so today we're going to be unboxing the MacBook Air 13 inch in the color Midnight. And yeah, you can kind of see a little preview of the color right here. Although I kind of think this looks like a space black, but it actually has a little bit of a blue tint. I don't know if you can tell from this picture. But yeah, it is called Midnight, so it makes sense. But just so you're aware, if you see this in the Apple store and it looks more like a black, it's actually not totally black. It definitely has some blue tint. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what the color actually looks like at home because the lighting is always a little bit different from at the Apple store. And also we got this MacBook with the M3 chip. They also have it available with the M2 chip. And honestly, it's not too much of an upgrade from the M2 chip. Like, I don't think you would notice it in your everyday use, but I feel like if you're gonna get a brand new MacBook, you probably want it to last for a few years. I just feel like the M3 chip is a lot more future-proof and you're gonna be able to use it for probably longer. So the price difference between the MacBook Air M2 chip and the M3 chip was for us $250. I think it's different for different countries. For us, it was $250, which is kind of like a lot but also if you're getting a macbook which is already so expensive 250 dollars isn't too much relative to the price and yeah it's probably gonna last you a little bit longer as i said like i definitely think when it comes to apple products that you want to use for multiple years i think definitely if you have the budget try to go for the newest and best there is on the market also we got this macbook with 256 gigabyte in storage which is the small option you have for this MacBook and then 8 gigabyte memory. I feel like this is really where you can save a lot of money if you, if you don't need the extra storage like definitely just go for the cheapest one I think. On my MacBook Pro I have 256 gigabyte storage and I do a lot of video editing. I would say it kind of works. I would definitely benefit by upgrading to 500 gigabyte but as I said like it works but if you're getting the MacBook Air it's probably not for doing a lot of video Video editing and professional stuff is probably because you're a student or just want to have a MacBook for regular use basically and this is like the most perfect MacBook for students I would say especially I think the 13 inch compared to the 15 inch this is kind of what we were deciding between when getting this MacBook and if you want to see the whole shopping vlog I will link it in the description but if you already came from that video I'm not gonna sit here and talk about what led us to ultimately decide on this MacBook because I already talked about that in the shopping vlog so for this video I just want to unbox it so let's just get right into Unboxing it. here and now I can't get it out because if it's perfectly and there's like no little thing to pull it up from okay let's just
so first impressions of this Mac first impressions of this MacBook. It is so tiny and so cute. I'm used to a 15 inch and this is just like I obviously saw it in the Apple store, but just holding it at home is like another feeling. It is so light. First of all, I'm used to a MacBook Pro 15 inch and this is a MacBook Air. Like the MacBook Air series is already famous for being lighter, like an on-the-go MacBook. But also switching to the 13 inch, it's such a convenient size. Like I can actually hold it and it's so comfortable. Like you can definitely walk around with it. And I mean, you're probably gonna want to have a case for it if you're on the go a lot. So you don't get any scratches or in case you drop it but yeah I'm in love with this size I'm, I'm actually starting to prefer this instead of the 15 inch we're gonna see once we start it up and actually start using it but so far I'm really in love with it it's so cute also first impression of this color this so the midnight i think it definitely in some lighting it looks a bit more like a really dark gray kind of like almost black but you can definitely tell it has some like blue tint to it well now it kind of looks just gray or black but i don't know it kind of is an interesting color it definitely feels more really really dark gray or black but with a blue tint so it definitely shifts but it's a really nice color yeah it's a really classy color i think and of course like the apple logo is still visible it's in this lighting you can definitely see the apple logo also i was not expecting it to come with a matching color cable so this is the charging cable and it has normal like macbook input and then a USB-C output and this is a little bit different than for the MacBook Pro because this is what my MacBook Pro charger looks like which is just USB-C to USB-C which I think is kind of convenient because I can actually use it for charging my other devices and now I can also charge my iPhone 15 with this cable but for this one you can't really do that because this is obviously just for the MacBook. Also, the power adapter for the MacBook Air is so much lighter and smaller than for the MacBook Pro. I mean, this is kind of an old version. I got it in 2019. Yeah, this is so large and this is just so convenient. So it's definitely easier to bring with you. One thing also to mention is this charging cable is like braided or I'm not sure what this material is called, but it's not the same as the plastic material of the old charging cable. I feel like this is a lot more durable than the plastic. And also as you can see, like this has gotten so miscolored, which just doesn't look nice. First of all, because it's a white cable, but also I think it's the plastic. So actually this is really nice having a darker color cable. So even if you get some like marks or discoloring, you can't really tell too much. It's really cute that it's matching the color of the MacBook. Okay, so now let's set this MacBook up. Also, one thing to mention on the design of this MacBook is I'm still used to the MacBook Airs just having this like incline design where it gets like thinner right here where you open it and then thicker at the other end. But they made it to actually just look like to actually just look like a MacBook Pro, but with a thinner design. So yeah, this is just what it looks like from the side. It's a really nice, like minimalistic look. Also here we have two USB-C inputs, and then this is for charging. On the other side, you have a little headphone jack. So you can only charge from the left side. That is one thing I'm kind of missing because with the MacBook Pro, you actually have the USB-C inputs on this side, but also on the other side, which is really good. So you can actually charge it from either side. That is the only thing I'm like not too happy about with this because if you have the cable coming from this side where you don't have a charging input, you kind of have to just go around it and bend the cable, which isn't too good, but yeah, I guess that's just what you get with this MacBook. I 
already love the screen size so much. I feel like it just looks more aesthetic than the bigger MacBook. Like there's not as much space around the, the actual keys on the keyboard on this MacBook. Whereas on the 15 inch, you have like the same size of the keys, I think, but you have a lot more space like around it just empty space and this definitely makes it feel more like compact and aesthetic i really like it and then also one thing i'm noticing is we have the touch id right here as a little circle um so yeah it's a really nice design Press the return key. To use British English as the main language. To use to use Australian English as the main language. Okay, so these are the accessibility settings you have. So if you have any needs like vision, motor, hearing, or cognitive, you can turn these on let's see what's in vision so basically it just gives you a voiceover for items on your computer so if you have a hard time seeing what's on your macbook and then we have motor so we have an accessibility keyboard which pops up on your screen so you can type on your computer without using this keyboard and then you have hearing you can use closed captions to display the music and sound effects while you watch movies and tv shows oh and here is the appearance so you can have light dark or auto i feel like since we got the midnight color which is a dark color we should go with the dark theme just to like match oh my god that is a vibe i'm getting so excited also one thing i'm noticing is this little notch right here it looks so different from my previous macbook it kind of makes it feel like an iphone it's just oh my god i really like it it's so cute okay and then we have a software update i'm just gonna update later because i want to get started continue we're not gonna do this right now okay and then we're gonna create a computer account wait the keyboard is actually so nice like it's just it feels very light when you press down the keys. I feel like my keys on the MacBook Pro are a lot more stiff. Like these ones are just so easy to press down. But we already got warned about this at the Apple store. With this color of the MacBook, you can definitely see fingerprints a lot easier. And I can already tell, like, why can't you see that so much? Like, I washed my hands before this, but you can already see some fingerprints. So... If you get this color, definitely just be prepared for just wiping it a few times, probably every day. All right, but now it's setting up my account. Molly, what do you think about the new MacBook? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, and then you can enable location services like your time zone. Okay, share analytics with Apple. Um, screen time, that's really nice to have. And then enable Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. I didn't know Siri had a male voice. I thought it was only one voice. Hi, I'm Siri. Like, that does not sound like Siri to me. Because Siri, how's the weather? Hey Siri, send a message. Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Okay, and then you can set up Touch ID. Okay, Touch ID is ready. <gasps> and we're in. It looks so good. Wait, so let's start with customizing this MacBook. Okay, so we're gonna start with wallpaper because so I just searched for pink MacBook wallpaper and I think we're gonna do this one. So we're just gonna press set desktop picture. Oh my God, that is so cute. So now we can move to trash. Okay, and now I want to get rid of this menu up here and down here. So we only have it when we hover over it. So we're just going to go to system settings, and, um, desktop, and automatically hide and show the dock, which is this. So it removes, but then when you hover with mouse over, it comes up again which I think just gives a really minimalistic look. I really like it. Okay, and then if you search for menu and settings, we can customize the menu up here and like the items you see here. So for example, we can do show the day of the week. We can remove that 
but I kind of want to have that. We can also do style for the clock. We can do digital or analog. It just changes the time up here. You can also display time with seconds, which is really cool, but I feel like that kind of stresses me out. And then we can also do flash to time separators. So as you can see, these ones, the little dots right here are just not moving right now. But if we activate it, you can see they're like blinking. It's kind of cute, I guess. But And then here we can do automatically hide and show the menu bar. We can choose always. And it's going to remove the menu bar, which is going to give you a super minimalistic look. Like right now, we don't have any widgets, so it obviously looks a little bit empty. But yeah, you can always activate it again. Okay, now I'm also going to activate stage manager, which is something I haven't used before, I think. But it seems to be really helpful. It basically says stage manager arranges your recent windows into a single strip for reduced clutter. And anything we can do to reduce clutter, I think is good. So we're going to activate it. This is so good if you're working on multiple tabs at once or like going into messages and notes and all these kind of apps at the same time. So we're going to turn on stage manager and then let's try it out. So if we open like notes and email and safari maybe like look at this like it's gonna place your different apps right here to the left and you can easily switch between all of them which is super nice all right and then also something i'm gonna do is change the accent color so right now i just picked pink but as you can see the accent color is like this when you've selected something it's gonna show a color and I think it's usually blue, but you can actually customize it right here. So I'm gonna pick, I think pink or just like gray maybe. No, I think we're gonna do pink. Okay, something else I'm gonna do is set up hot corners. So if we just press hot corners down here under desktop and dock, we can pick like if I hover over this corner, it's gonna do a certain action. We can choose put display to sleep or start screensaver or start a quick node. I think we're gonna do maybe let's just do quick node. And then you can choose like for this corner something else. So if we hover over this corner, it opens a quick node for you. So super good is super convenient okay now this is something i'm really excited for placing widgets on my desktop i haven't never done this before so we can just pick basically between all of these or we can also search up our own widgets so for right now so for right now i think we're just gonna do maybe like a calendar widget let's do a reminder widget oh or maybe this one this is really cute contacts wait there's so many different widgets okay so from this menu right here with widgets you can actually just drag and put them on your desktop and then we can just customize it and make it look really nice as you can see right now i have a shortcut called calculator but it doesn't look really cute so i'm gonna add custom like color Okay, so in the shortcut settings, we can do a custom color, so we're gonna do pink, and then we can also do a custom symbol. Oh, we actually have a calculator symbol, so we're gonna do that one. Okay, and now this is what it looks like. I feel like there's too much pink, but anyways, you get the point. I would say like definitely don't be afraid to go for the 13 inch compared to the 15 inch because this is so cute so convenient this just to give you a little size reference for how small this macbook actually is compared to the 15 inch macbook pro like it is tiny i can definitely tell this macbook is five years older this definitely feels like such a big upgrade just like everything's faster i can already tell like the mouse just moves a lot faster if i do the same thing here it's 
it's not the same feeling i know it's hard seeing through the camera but you can see like how fast the mouse moves right here and here it's like it's not the same thing um only thing missing that the macbook pro has is the little like display right here so you can for example you can adjust audio and you can adjust brightness with the touch display this one doesn't have that so you have to press the buttons which is a little bit more like old school that is definitely more modernized on the macbook pro but other than that i have no complaints also one thing i noticed when closing down the macbooks listen like it makes a really loud noise yeah just like my puppy but the macbook air like it barely makes any noise even if i close it pretty fast but with this one even if I'm really careful, I'm like I closed it super slowly, but it still made loud noise. So, but yeah, look at that. You can already see so many fingerprints. This is definitely the most negative thing about this color compared to this one. Like you can barely see fingerprints. All right, but thank you so much for watching this little MacBook Air unboxing and setup. And yeah, if you want to see the shopping vlog, I'll link it in the description. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And